Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture 5 of Security of Information Systems course. So the today topics is risk management and business continuity management. Okay. So what is risk? According to the uh, ISO uh, 31000 risk management risk is the effect of uncertainty on objectives. No distinction between positive and negative effects of uncertainty. This definition is too abstract for most people. Also says, risk is often expressed in terms of a combination of the consequences of an event including changes in circumstances and the associated likelihood of occurrence. Okay, so according to Harris, uh, CISSP, seventh edition these are the definitions of risk risk is the likelihood of a threat agent taking advantage of a vulnerability and the resulting business impact i think this is a, a better description and according to the I, iso uh, uh, 27005 information security risk Risk is the potential that a given threat will exploit vulnerabilities of assets and thereby cause harm to the organization. Okay, this is also a good description according to me. Abstract Risk Model NSM Okay, so there are uh, three sides of the risk model. There are assets, threats, and vulnerabilities, and it is general risk. Models general risk in an abstract way. The more assets you have, the more threats you are faced with, and the more vulnerable you are, then the greater the risk. Okay. Detailed risk model. Okay, so uh, what does legend means that it explains what does uh, these uh, arrows, each one of them meaning uh each one of them means so the threat agent has these attributes okay threat agent motivation threat agent capacity and then they are both uh, uh, be uh, dividing into or contributing to yes it's contributing to as mentioned here Threat agent strength. And then uh, threat agent strength is contributing to likelihood, frequency of threat scenario to cause incident. Okay, this is also contributed by vulnerability to threat scenario. And threat scenario has attributes of vulnerability to threat scenario threat agent capacity so you see uh, this is a threat scenario this is a threat agent and then threat scenario also has a, a, a attribute of impact of incident on asset and then impact of incident on asset and likelihood frequency of threat uh, incident uh, becomes together they contribute to Specific risk. Each specific risk results from a threat scenario that can affect specific assets. Motivation, capacity, vulnerability, and impact determine the risk level for that specific risk. Okay, so uh, there are uh, four things that determine the risk level for a specific risk, which are motivation of the attacker capacity of the attacker vulnerability of the system and the impact of the attack okay many risks multiple different threats threat scenarios can be identified each threat can potentially cause an incident
Each potential incident has a risk level. Multiple threats many risks. So multiple threats uh, may result in many risks. So you see there is threat 1, incident 1 and risk 1, threat 2, incident 2 and risk 2, threat 3, incident 3 and risk 3 and it goes on. It is also uh, same in real life as well. As many as enemies you have, you are under more risk. This is same for information uh, system security as well. So you need to assess and determine your enemies threats uh, correctly analyze them correctly and take precautions according to your uh, threats possible enemies practical risk model practical risk analysis typically considers two factors to determine the level of each risk okay so Practical analysis uses two factors, which are Likelihood, frequency of each type of incident Impact on assets, loss, resulting from each type of incident Okay, this is really important uh, The risks would change uh, widely according to your uh, system For example, if you are uh, running a bank the threats may cause uh, millions of dollars uh, revenue loss or you are running a let's say forum website threats may cause your forum to become unavailable for several days and you are running a game and people may lose their accounts and such which can be uh, recovered so the threats changes according to the loss of assets and the likelihood frequency of incident okay so there is a threat scenario threat scenario and it has two attributes likelihood frequency of threat scenario to cause incident impact of incident on asset and they both contribute to risk level Okay, so there is a uh, risk management standards, which are ISO 27005 Information Security Risk Management ISO 31000 Risk Management NIST SP 800-39 Managing Information Security Risk NIST SP 800-30 Guide for Conducting Risk Assessment formerly called Risk Management Guide for Information Technology Systems. We can uh, search for each of them and find probably them. Okay, let's open the Wikipedia English of this one. ISO, IEC 27005 is a set of standards from the International Organization for Standardization ISO, and the International Electrotechnical Commission IEC, that provides guidelines and techniques for managing information security risks. ISO, IEC 27005 is designed to assist in the implementation of information security, based on a risk management approach. Okay, and let's look to the next one. ISO 31000 is a family of standards relating to risk management codified by the International Organization for Standardization. ISO 31000 to 2018 provides principles and generic guidelines on managing risks faced by organizations. ISO 31000 seeks to provide a universally recognized paradigm for practitioners and companies employing risk management processes to replace the myriad of existing standards, methodologies and paradigms that differed between industries, subject matters and regions. For this purpose, the recommendations provided in ISO 31000 can be customized to any organization and its context. One. Okay. Let's look at this one. Okay. 
cuman just a very big file as you can see The purpose of Special Publication 800-39 is to provide guidance for an integrated, organization-wide program for managing information security risk to organizational operations i.e., mission, functions, image, and reputation, organizational assets, individuals, other organizations, and the nation resulting from the operation and use of federal information systems. Special Publication 800-39 provides a structured, yet flexible approach for managing information security risk that is intentionally broad-based, with the specific details of assessing, responding to, and monitoring risk on an ongoing basis provided by other supporting NIST security standards and guidelines. The guidance provided in this publication is not intended to replace or subsume other risk-related activities, programs, processes, or approaches that organizations have implemented or intend to implement addressing areas of risk management covered by other legislation, directives, policies, programmatic initiatives, or mission, business requirements. Rather, the information security risk management guidance described herein is complementary to and can be used as part of a more comprehensive enterprise risk management ERM program. Okay, and uh, there is one more. Oh, okay. So if you wonder what is uh, NIST, NIST is the Computer Security Center of National Institute of Standard and Technology, U.S. Department of Commerce. Okay. This one. Okay, let's check the uh, next one. Abstract The purpose of Special Publication 800-30 is to provide guidance for conducting risk assessments of federal information systems and organizations, amplifying the guidance in Special Publication 800-39. Risk assessments, carried out at all three tiers in the risk management hierarchy, are part of an overall risk management process, providing senior leaders, executives with the information needed to determine appropriate courses of action in response to identified risks. Okay. Okay, so. What is risk management? Is risk management analyses what can happen and what the possible consequences can be, before deciding what should be done and when, to reduce risk to an acceptable level? This is according to... I saw uh, 27,005. Risk management consists of coordinated activities to direct and control an organization with regard to risk. This is according to ISO 31000, ISO, IEC 27002. Okay, so let's see the risk management process according to ISO 27005. So it starts with uh, information security strategy and this is the uh, context of is, is, is risk management. Okay, so we start with context establishment. Uh, the context establishment uh, includes organization, approach, scope and risk criteria. Then we make a risk assessment based on these four and risk assessment uh, risk assessment includes uh, risk identification risk estimation risk evaluation and communication after that 
uh, we get to the point risk decision point one if the risk assessment is satisfactory we move to the risk treatment plan if it is not we return back to context establishment and we re-establish co the context and we remake the risk assessment and we check again whether risk decision is uh, satisfactory or not okay if the answer is yes the risk treatment plan the risk treatment plan stage starts uh, the risk treatment plan includes risk reduction risk transfer risk retention risk avoidance and uh, communication okay then we check that the risk decision point two is uh, the treatment is satisfactory or not if the risk treatment plan is satisfactory we move to the accepted residual risk and if not we return back to context establishment uh, stage okay if the accepted resu uh, if the treatment is satisfactory uh, we move to the accepted residual risk uh, let me accepted residual risk okay then uh, there is a risk communication and then we implement the risk treatment plan okay and let's see the risk assessment process according to ISO 27005 so it starts with context establishment and the risk assessment is uh, like this first risk identification is done that the identification includes identification of assets identification of threats identification of existing controls identification of vulnerabilities identification of consequences after we have done this we move to the risk analysis and then we make risk estimation with doing assess asset values and impacts assess incident likelihood frequency determine compute risk levels then we make the risk evaluation after we have collected enough uh, data rank risks compare risks with criteria then decide whether risk assessment is satisfactory or not if it is not move back to the context establishment so the risk management uh, information security management system integration risk management isms integration Risk management is an essential element of information security management system ISMS. Required to identify threats, what can go wrong. Basis for selecting security controls. Tool for top management to understand organization's risk exposure. Okay, so that is planning, risk assessment security controls and both of these composers is risk management and there is evaluation reporting and isms this is the as entirely it is isms cycle basis for assessing risk okay first know the assets know the assets Identify, examine, and understand the information and systems currently in place. Know the enemy. This is really important, knowing your enemy. Identify, examine, and understand threats facing the organization. Know the losses your organization can tolerate. This is also really important. No responsibility of each stakeholders within an organization to manage risks that are encountered. Okay, so. Roles involved in risk management. Management, users, and information technology must all work together. Asset owners must participate in developing inventory lists. 
Users and experts must assist in identifying threats and vulnerabilities, and in determining likelihoods. Risk management experts must guide stakeholders through the risk assessment process. Security experts must assist in selecting controls. Management must review risk management process and approve controls. Problems of measuring risk Businesses normally wish to measure risk in money, but almost impossible to do this. Valuation of assets Value of data, hard to assess. Value of goodwill and customer confidence, very vague. Likelihood of threats. Past events not always relevant for future probabilities. The nature of future attacks is unpredictable. The actions of future attackers are unpredictable. Measurement of benefit from security contro. Problems with the difference of two approximate quantities. Estimation of past and present risk. Asset valuation and prioritization. Questions help develop criteria for asset valuation. Which information asset is most critical to organization success? Generates the most revenue, profitability. Would be most expensive to replace or protect. Would be the embarrassing or cause liability if revealed. So you see that uh, asset value valuation is and prioritization is very important. You need to uh, give different importances importances to your. Uh, security vulnerabilities or the you should to take you should take actions based on the uh, critical level of the vulnerabilities for example you may get a ddos service that will cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars per month and if ddos happens your service will become unavailable and what will be the uh, losses that you will get from ddos or alternatively you spend that money to hire white uh, hackers and let them to try find vulnerabilities and exploits in your system and uh, fix them uh, so you need to evaluate your uh, uh, pr priorities and take action based on that prioritization create waiting for each category Calculate relative importance of each asset. List the assets in order of importance using a weighted factor analysis worksheet. Threat scenario identification. Realistic threat scenarios need to be described, unimportant threats can be ignored. Threat assessment. Which threats present danger to assets? Which threats represent the most danger to information? How much would it cost to recover from attack? Which threat are most expensive to prevent? Threat assessment is important during system development. Used to discover and avoid vulnerabilities in software and systems. Threat scenario modeling. Attacker centric starts from attackers, evaluates their goals, and how they might achieve them through attack tree. Usually starts from entry points or attacker action. System centric, aka SW, design, architecture centric. Okay. Starts from model of system, and attempts to follow model dynamics and logic, looking for types of attacks against each element of the model. This approach is e.g. used for threat modeling in Microsoft's security development lifecycle. For example, uh, you can start 
analyzing the user inputs where you get the user input and how you treat them are you trusting the user input or not this could be system centric i believe asset centric starts from assets entrusted to a system such as a collection of sensitive personal information and attempts to identify how security breaches of cia properties can happen okay so an example of attacker centric attack tree attacker centric attack tree example okay so there are uh, six uh, let's say goals okay so the legends uh, show them so each goal is numbered as g with numbered with uh, g letters starting from zero to uh, five and this line is and conjuct conjunctive conjunctive okay conjunctive and all sub goals needed then there is or disjunctive and the sub goal needed so so uh, g0 main goal is attacker wants user account data okay we are right now uh, preparing a attacker centric attack tree and the attacker goal is defined as attacker wants to user account data okay for example let's say you have let's think about our school system uh, which holds the uh, all related data of uh, students and the attacker wants to obtain students uh, data tables okay so which ways could uh, the attacker use the first uh, way of attacker uh, breaching our security is sql injection through web this is one of the most common and unfortunately most uh, successful attack type because usually the amateur programmers are not giving important uh, in, in, uh, not giving the necessary importance to this type of attack uh, so i will try to find a good example of that to explain you because this is really really important okay so let's uh read this page because as i said this is the uh, really important one okay so you really should understand this attack type let me check the other pages as well maybe there is a better example This is another good example. Not this one. Not this one as well. Okay, I will use this page. So let's start. What is SQL injection SQLI and how to prevent it? SQL injection SQLI is a type of an injection attack that makes it possible to execute malicious SQL statements. These statements control a database server behind a web application. Attackers can use SQL injection vulnerabilities to bypass application security measures. They can go around authentication and authorization of a web page or web application and retrieve the content of the entire SQL database. They can also use SQL injection to add, modify, and delete records in the database. So this is the type of injection attack and let's see what is injection attack. 
What are injection attacks? Injection attacks refer to a broad class of attack vectors. In an injection attack, an attacker supplies untrusted input to a program. This input gets processed by an interpreter as part of a command or query. In turn, this alters the execution of that program. Injections are amongst the oldest and most dangerous attacks aimed at web applications. They can lead to data theft, data loss, loss of data integrity, denial of service, as well as full system compromise. The primary reason for injection vulnerabilities is usually insufficient user input validation. So you see, this is the case, insufficient user input validation. As a primary rule, always think that the user is malicious and user tries to hack your system. So never trust any input, any data coming from user. Okay, always treat it as a malicious data. Okay, always treat it as a the user is trying to hack your system. Therefore, take every precaution make every validation of the user input okay never trust user input never ever trust user input also never ever trust that the exe file you are going to distribute or whatever the file uh, encryption that file can be read by the users even if you are making obs obs obfuscation uh, okay let me this is harder to read. Code obfuscation. Okay, even if you are doing code obfuscation, uh, they can still find the passwords or other things that you are inserting into your code. Okay, so never trust that either. This attack type is considered a major problem in web security. It is listed as the number one web application security risk in the OWASP top 10 and for a good reason. Injection attacks, particularly SQL injections SQLI attacks, and cross-site scripting XSS, are not only very dangerous but also widespread, especially in legacy applications. So what is uh, OWASP top 10? Okay, so I think these are the uh, top ten attacks. We will go. Uh, we will get to that. What makes injection vulnerabilities particularly scary is that the attack surface is enormous, especially for XSS and SQL injection vulnerabilities. Furthermore, injection attacks are a very well understood vulnerability class. This means that there are many freely available and reliable tools that allow even inexperienced attackers to abuse these vulnerabilities automatically. Okay, this is also important uh, because for you to get hacked, there must be a hacker behind it. Okay, and if there are, uh, if the available tools are uh, broad and ubiquitous, uh, and that means there will be more more people to hack your system. Ubiquitous. Or something like this. Yeah, ubiquitous. Ubiquitous. Okay, it's hard to read for me. And types of injection attacks. SQL injection SQLI, and cross-site scripting XSS, are the most common injection attacks, but they are not the only ones. The following is a list of common injection attack types. Okay, so let's see them and continue to SQL injection. Code injection. The attacker injects application code written in the application language. This code may be used to execute operating system commands with the privileges of the user who is running the web application. In advanced cases, the attacker may exploit additional privilege escalation vulnerabilities, which may lead to full web server compromise. Okay, so the potential impact is full system comp compromise. As you can see, the potential impact is also calculated. CRLF injection. 
The attacker injects an unexpected CRLF, carriage return and line feed, character sequence. This sequence is used to split an HTTP response header and write arbitrary contents to the response body. This attack may be combined with cross-site scripting XSS. Cross-site scripting XSS. So the impact of uh, CRLF injection is cross-site scripting. Okay, this is the second most common attack type, maybe the first. Cross-site scripting XSS. This is also really uh, dangerous. The attacker injects an arbitrary script, usually in JavaScript, into a legitimate website or web application. This script is then executed inside the victim's browser. Okay, think about a second. How could this happen? This can happen in websites that the website is taking uh, a string from user and then displaying that string to other users, such as forums, such as private messaging pro pro programs or any messaging program, because you are taking a string, a message from a user, then displaying that string, that message to another user. So if you are not careful, a user can send uh, a secret message to the uh, other user and when other users display that message if that script is not properly encoded it would run on the other user's computer then uh, with that script uh, you you could download a hacking exit into the victim computer or steal the cookies of that comp of that user and you can do so many things this is this is why it is really dangerous. It, the, imp the potential impact of uh, XSS are Account impersonation Defacement Run arbitrary JavaScript in the victim's browser. Okay, so another type of attack is email header injection. This attack is very similar to CRLF injections. The attacker sends IMAP, SMTP commands to a mail server that is not directly available via a web application. Spam relay. Information disclosure. Okay, so these two are the potential impact of email header injection. As you can see, these may not be as dangerous as others. However, this information disclosure could be more dangerous. And there is host header injection. The attacker abuses the implicit trust of the HTTP host header to poison password reset functionality and web caches. Password reset poisoning. Cache poisoning. Okay, you see every one of these is explained on this website. Uh, I don't know, maybe in the future lessons we can see each of them. LDAP injection. The attacker injects LDAP lightweight directory access protocol statements to execute arbitrary LDAP commands. They can gain permissions and modify the contents of the LDAP tree. Okay, I think I will check each of these uh, at the next lecture. So today let's continue with uh, SQL injection. And uh, at the next lesson we can look at each of them with more details. Okay, so, uh, okay, I think I will see the SQL injection as well at the, uh, at the next uh, lecture. So I'm continuing. So the uh, uh, first uh, uh, method is SQL injection through of web. It has a probability. And there is the second uh, method as impersonate login. Okay. So what is impersonate login? User impersonation allows administrators to access and operate channel activity as if they were logged in as the user. Okay. So this could be done with cookies or XSS. And the third method Attack user client with XSS cross-site script. 
and that is uh, you see the impersonate login is done by getting login IDs if they are hidden and finding passwords so the probability of attack success the attack uh, aim was uh, stealing user account data and it could be done with each of these methods however it would be really really uh, hard to get all user data with uh, XSS attack and it could it would be the easiest way would be the SQL injection through web and the probability of attack success is man minus man minus probability of uh, method one uh, product man minus probability of attack uh, probability of method four and method five and product man minus probability of method three okay so this is the attacker centric attack tree example you can calculate your uh, probability of attack attack success of the hacker with such method system centric threat modeling example okay so this was the attacker centric and now we are going to see system centric threat modeling example in this model uh, let's uh, start user may not have logged off on shared computer this is important when you log in your data from a shared computer you are under heavy threat why because that computer could be already infected by password stealers or malwares or other things and your data could get stolen easily or if your website is keeping uh, you as logged in uh, a person can uh, do anything with your account and such things so we have to think about that probability when we are designing a system okay so what could be our solution it can be implementing a timeout for logins even if the user forgets and if we time out after 15 minutes uh, so it would be unlikely for another person to exploit that login okay and the second uh, thing is traffic interception traffic interception uh, this is also very possible uh, especially when you are in a shared network so we implement encryption for example uh, HTTPS protocol which uh, encrypts the all the data between uh, user and server or you can also add uh, extra uh, encryption if you want and we move to the front end and web server what could be the exploit unauthorized access to prevent unauthorized access to our web server we add password policy which means a login system and another possibility is sql injection to prevent that we validate every input and there is backend up logic uh, which cannot be accessed directly and which could be accessed only by front-end web server or directly hacking of your server somehow if your server has vulnerabilities unpatch it it is not up to date and mysql database hacking which is also done by sql injection through front end web server or web services or apis okay so this is system centric threat modeling example and let's move to asset centric threat modeling example okay uh, so there is data confidentiality integrity and availability this is uh, three main legs of information security what can happen DOS attack okay this is uh, the lamest attack that is possible uh, and also it is easiest to run if you have if you have uh, zombie devices the attack works uh, pretty simple your server is get overloaded therefore your, uh, your server gets overloaded by bots or zombie devices therefore your authentic real users cannot access to your server uh, resources it is simple 
and those attack can be done uh, to okay so what as it could affect the DOS attack it can affect the computer rep company reputation because your server becomes unavailable it can also affect your customer base and there is also hardware and software of server and what attack uh, it is under which uh, vulnerabilities which threats penetration of servers and okay nothing else so the hardware and server is under only penetration of servers threats uh, data cia also under a uh, threat of penetration of servers and the company company reputation is under threat of those attack it is also under threat of disclosure of user data uh, the data cia also under uh, threat of disclosure of user data and then customer base customer base is under threat of dos attack customer base is under threat of disclosure of user data and customer base is under attack of under threat of misuse of user data and legal compliance legal compliance okay the legal compliance is under threat of disclosure of user data and misuse of user data so like legal compliance is more related to user data okay so this was the asset centric threat modeling example these are our assets hardware and software is our asset data ci is other our asset our reputation is our asset our customers are our customer base is our asset and legal complaints is our asset okay vulnerability identification Specific avenues threat agents can exploit to attack an information asset are called vulnerabilities. Examines how each threat could be perpetrated against the organization's assets. Process works best when people with diverse backgrounds within organization work iteratively in a series of brainstorming sessions. At end of risk identification process, list of assets and their vulnerabilities is achieved. Vulnerabilities discovered during system development can be fixed and avoided in production system. Identifying specific risks. Threats, incidents password compromise okay so these are the threats that could happen or the incidents password com compromise sql injection logical bomb in uh, software trojan infects clients and cryptanalysis of cipher brute force attack social engineering we have seen how social engineering could be dangerous to your system and these are the vulnerabilities vulnerabilities weak passwords poor awareness no input validation so you see no input validation is matched with sql injection this is the vulnerability of this threat okay and weak password is the vulnerability of password compromise or poor awareness is vulnerable to password compromise, as you can see. Outdated antivirus. Weak ciphers. Short crypto keys. Poor usability. So poor usability is a vulnerable to social engineering. Short crypto keys is a vulnerable to brute force attack or crypto analysis of ciphers. And weak ciphers is also a crypto analysis of cipher and such. And then we assess the impacts of each thread. Uh, deleted files, damaged files, damaged reputation, stolen files, sensitivity levels, one, two, three, intercepted traffic, false transaction and such. Okay. A valid combinations of threat, vulnerability and asset impact represents a single specific risk. 
All relevant specific risks should be identified. Estimating risk levels. Types of analysis. Okay. Qualitative analysis. Qualitative. Uses descriptive scales. Example. Impact level, minor, moderate, major, catastrophic. Likelihood, rare, unlikely, possible, likely, almost certain. Okay, so you see these are scale, uh, scale at, uh, uh, categorization, minor, moderate, major, catastrophic, or rare, unlikely, possible, likely, almost certain. And these are all qualitative. Okay, then semi-quantitative. Semi-quantitative. Qualitative scales assigned numerical values can be used informally for prioritization with caution and then quantitative use numerical values for both consequence e.g. dollar 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 and likelihood e.g. probability value okay so qualitative likelihood scale increasing likelihood okay so this is a table uh, likelihood if likelihood is high is expected to occur in most conditions one or more times per year if it is medium the event will probably happen in most conditions every two years if it is low the event should happen at some time every five years if it is unlikely the event could happen at some time every 10 years. Okay, so then we move to the qualitative impact level scale. Increasing impact, the impacts are uh, this, this described as, as uh, like this. So major. Major problems would occur and threaten the provision of important processes resulting in significant financial loss. Okay, the moderate services would continue, but would need to be reviewed or changed. Okay, there is minor effectiveness of services would be threatened but dealt with. And there is insignificant dealt with as a part of routine operations. Okay, so an example of uh, qualitative uh, qualitative risk. risk estimation example qualitative risk levels add likelihood and impact level okay so there is likelihood and impact level when they get combined we get uh, five different uh, results so E. Extreme risk, immediate action required. V. H. Very high risk, senior management attention needed. M. Moderate risk, management responsibility must be specified. V. L. Very low risk, manage by routine procedures. N. Negligible risk, to be ignored. Okay, so if the risk level if the risk uh, likelihood is unlikely and if the risk level is insignificant then we get the result and negligible risk it can be ignored okay if the likelihood is low and if the risk level is insignificant it is very low and managed by routine procedures if the likelihood is medium and if the risk level is insignificant it is low Okay, uh, so still we continue with managed by routine procedures. This means it is very low or low. Okay, if the risk level is high and the, I mean the likelihood is high and the risk level is insignificant, it, it gets to medium. Uh, so it is moderate risk, management responsibility must be specified. Then we move to the next impact level. If the likelihood is unlikely and the impact level is minor, it is very low. Okay. If, if the risk uh, likelihood is low and the impact level is uh, uh, 
minor, then it is low. And if the likelihood is medium and the impact level is minor, it becomes medium and then it becomes high. Okay. So this is a risk level table with combination of likelihood and impact level. So another example. Semi-quantitative risk estimation example. Semi-quantitative risk levels multiply likelihood and impact level. Okay, so this is multi multiplication of likelihood and impact level, and this is addition of likelihood and, and impact level. So we get risk level. So the likelihood is uh, again listed like this, and there is impact level again listed like this. And when they get multiplied, you see now we get some numbers. You see these numbers can be used as ranking of uh, risk level. One second. Nil. 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 No risk exists. Neg. Negligible. To be ignored. VL very low managed by routine so you see in this semi quantitative risk estimation very low and low is separated because they get different rankings this time very low gets 2 and low gets 3 L low managed by routine procedures M moderate specify responsibility M plus, moderate plus, specifu responsive. Okay, so you see this time we can even uh, sep uh, define moderate with uh, even more details. It can be separated into two cases. Okay, let's continue. The high also gets into two categories. H, high, management attention. H plus, high plus, management attention. VH, very high, priority action action. E, extreme, immediate action required. Okay, so, then the next example. Quantitative risk estimation example. Example quantitative risk analysis method. Quantitative parameters. Asset value, AV. Estimated total value of asset. Exposure factor, EF. Percentage of asset loss caused by threat occurrence. Single loss expectancy, SLE. SLE equals AVEF. So the single loss, loss expectancy, expectancy is calculated as Asset value multiplying with exposure factor. Okay. Annualized rate of occurrence arrow. Estimated frequency a threat will occur within a year. Annualized loss expectancy AL. So the analyzed loss expectancy expectancy is calculated as multiplication of single loss expectancy and Analyze the rate of occurrence. Okay. AL equals SLE arrow. Quantitative risk estimation example. Example quantitative risk analysis. Risk description. Asset, public image, and trust. Threat, defacing website through intrusion. impact loss of image so this threat is defacing website through intrusion okay so what uh, do we lose the asset is public image and trust and the impact is loss of image so the parameter estimates are like below av public image equals one million dollars ef public image affected by defacing equals 0.05 SLE equals AVEF equals $50,000. Arrow, defacing, equals 2. AL equals SLE arrow equals $100,000.
So unannounced loss expectancy is about one hundred thousand dollars. Therefore, we can spend one hundred. Justify spending up to one hundred thousand dollars P A on controls. Therefore, we can spend one hundred thousand dollars to prevent this risk. You see, you should not spend more money than it is necessary to prevent a risk. You should calculate your uh, risk loss, make its analysis, and take action according to that. This is all about business. Risk listing and ranking. Okay, there is a threat scenario. Okay, let's read each of them. Threat scenario. Existing controls and vulnerabilities. Asset impact. Impact level. Likelihood description. Likelihood and risk level. So, if this happens, Compromise of user password. If compromise of user password happens, what happens? Uh, this is the threat scenario. It can happen by no control or enforcement of password strength. So the asset impact of this compromise would be deleted files, breach of confidentiality and integrity. The impact level is moderate, likelihood description will happen to one of 50 users every year. The likelihood medium and risk level is high. Okay, so the virus infection of clients, uh, it can be caused by virus filters display disabled on many clients. Assets impact compromised of clients, the impact level is moderate, will happen to one in 100 clients every year. Likelihood is high and risk level is extreme. Web server hacking and defacing, it can be caused by IDS, firewall, daily patching, but zero day exploit exists. It can cause your reputation asset. Impact level is minor, could happen once every year, likelihood medium, and risk level is moderate. And this is the other thing. Let's make it read. Logical bomb planted by insider. No review of source code that goes into production. Breach of integrity or loss of data major could happen once every 10 years unlikely mode rate. So this is done by an insider which means a member of your company. Uh, and it could be caused since no one else reviews the source code that it goes into production. And the asset impact would be breach of integrity or loss of data. It is a major impact as you can see could happen. It is very unlikely and therefore the risk is moderate. Risk control strategies. After completing the risk assessment, the security team must choose one of four strategies to control each risk. Reduce risk by implementing security controls. Share, transfer risk, outsource activity that causes risk, or buy insurance. Retain risk, understand and tolerate potential consequences. Avoid risk, stop activity that causes risk. Economy of security controls. The level of risk reduction. Good reason to implement security control. You see there is a uh, curve level of risk reduction and cost of reducing risk. If the re level of risk reduction is too high with minimal cost, good reason to implement security control. If it is not that uh, much risk reduction with uh, a lot of money, use judgment to decide. If cost of risk reduction is too much and the level of risk reduction is too low, uneconomic, don't do that such as uh, in my case ddos attack uh, or let's give an example let's say you have a website that gets 1000 visitor per day and you are generating 100 dollar per day okay and however you are getting a ddos attack one day that is about 20 terabyte per second and to mitigate that attack you need to pay 100 or let's say $50 per day, okay, or maybe $75 per day. 
therefore it would be take your uh, 75% of your revenue each day to just mitigate a DDoS attack that can happen anytime or that may not happen in many years. Okay, so you need to decide that yourself. Losing one or two days money versus constantly losing 75% uh, of your money. Okay, so this is about judgment to decide whether that risk is uh, tolerable or not. Business Continuity Management Outline Business Continuity Planning Disaster Recovery Disaster recovery is very important uh, because uh, you should have backup of your uh, data or let's say uh, assets in another place and in case of disaster happens you can recover with that backup business continuity management procedures for the recovery of an organization's facilities in case of major incidents and disasters so that the organization will be able to either maintain or quickly resume mission critical functions bcm standards so bcm is business continuity management ISO 27031 Guidelines for Information and Communications Technology Readiness for Business Continuity NISTSP 800-34 Contingency Planning Guide for Federal Information Systems Effect of BCM Okay, so there is before implementation of BCM and after implementation of BCM incorporating early detection and response capabilities of information uh, ict readiness okay uh, ict is yeah i don't know operational status so when after incident happened if you have bcm incorporation you see your business returns back to normal in a very short amount of time and if you don't have bcm you see you get a very sharp decline and it takes much more time to get uh, or get same or get high percentages okay so what could be the description of ict I see it readiness. Okay, information and communication technology. It is probably that. Okay, I'm going to write and uh, take a no note of it. Okay, let's continue okay how come is bcm in the real world two thousand six ccss extract most commonly reported categories of computer security policies and procedures two thousand six Media backup procedures 95%. User access management 93%. External network access control procedures 78%. Documented operating procedures 
User Responsibilities Policies 72% Controls Against Malicious Software 66% Monitoring System Access and Use 64% Change Control Procedures 60% Clock Synchronization Policy 59% Decommissioning Equipment Procedures 59% System Audit Policy 58% Business Continuity Management 54% Incident Management Procedures 51% Business Continuity Management the range of incidents and disasters to be considered include Acts of nature, for example Excessive weather conditions, earthquake, flood, fire Human acts, inadvertent or deliberate, for example Hacker activity, mistakes by operating staff, theft, fraud, vandalism, terrorism Okay, so these are the... Uh, Incidents and disasters consider it to be included. Business Continuity Plan BCP. From getting control over the crisis. The Business Continuity Plan describes a sequence of actions and the parties responsible for carrying them out in response to disasters in order to restore normal business operations as quickly as possible to back in business okay bcp terminology business continuity plan plan for restoring normal business functions after disruption business contingency plan same as business continuity plan Contingency means something unpredictable that can happen. Disaster recovery. Re-establishment of business functions after a disaster, possibly in temporary facilities. Requires a BCP, um, business continuity management. Denotes the management of business continuity. Includes the establishment of a BCP. ICT Readiness for Business Continuity IRBC, term used in ISO 27031 Okay, uh, so let's continue. So the ICT was uh, Information and Communication Technology. Okay. BCP Management, same as IRBC. IRBC is being ICT Readiness for Business Continuity. Okay. So BCP policy, management approval, scope, responsibility teams. Okay. Business impact analysis, BIA, critical functions, uh, MTD, risks, and identify preventive controls, implement controls, mit mitigate, mitigate risks. Trolls, mitigate risks. Okay. Recovery strategies, processes, facilities, data, develop BCP. Document responsibility, teams, strategies, test BCP, exercises, improvements, training, maintain BCP, integrate, update, and distribute. So this is the BCP management. Okay. The source is from Source NIST Special Publication 800 to 34 Rev.1. Contingency Planning Guide for Information Technology Systems P.13. Okay, P is page. So, uh, BCP development is incorporate BIA findings, document recovery strategy. Uh, it is uh, branched into supporting information BIA, POC list procedures, activation and notification phase, activation criteria, notification procedures, outreach assessment, recovery phase, sequence recovery activities. Uh, recovery procedures, escalation and notifications, reconstitution phase, concurrent processing, testing, notifications, cleanup, off-site data storage, backup documentation, and appendices, BIA, POC lists, POC lists, and procedures. So this is also taken from 
BCP Development and Output, NIST SP800-34, Rev.1P.34. Okay. BIA, Business Impact Analysis. A business impact analysis BIA, is performed as part of the BCP development to identify the functions that in the event of a disaster or disruption, would cause the greatest financial or operational loss. Consider e.g. IT network support, data processing, accounting, software development, payroll, uh, customer support, order entry, production scheduling, purchasing and communications. BIA continued. The MTD maximum tolerable downtime is defined for each function in the event of disaster. So MTD was uh, mentioned here in business impact analysis, critical functions, MTD and risks. Okay. So example, non-essential, it can be 30 days, normal, 7 days, Important 72 hours, urgent 24 hours, and critical minus 2 hours. Okay. Alternative sites. More expensive. Redundant site. Mirror of the primary processing environment operable within minutes so this means that basically you are having two servers and one of them is clone of another it's a leave clone and if your primary server gets down in an incident the second clone server takes its place immediately so it is operable within minutes okay this is redundant site hot site Fully configured hardware and software, but no data. Operable within hours. Okay, so this is also almost same as redundant site, except this doesn't have that data. So you just copy the data from your uh, disaster happiness site or from backup, and then within hours you are good to go. Okay, there is cloud and warm site. Warm site. Partially configured with some equipment, but not the actual computers. Operable within days. Cold site. Basic electricity and plumbing. Operable within week. Okay, so these are uh, less expensive and these are more expensive. Cloud is probably just for backing up data. Okay. Whenever relevant, consider cloud services, which can be relatively low cost. Also, you can have a hot site or warm site within cloud as well, depending on your uh, needings. However, in most cases, it could be used for uh, backing the data. BCP testing. Checklist test. Copies of the BCP distributed to departments for review. Structured walk through test. Representatives from each department come together to go through the plan. Simulation test. All staff in operational and support functions come together to practice executing the BCP. Parallel test. Business functions tested at alternative site. Full interruption test. Business functions at primary site halted and migrated to alternative site in accordance with the BCP. Okay, so these are the testing uh, phases or strategies. So, uh... I'm going to open the lectures and check the next one.
Okay, so next week uh, I plan to use this Details. Okay. So let's uh, publish our slide into our repository. I haven't decided about the project. And if you have ideas about your semester project, you can uh, send them to me. You can join our uh, Discord channel and contact contact me from there. You know our Discord channel is uh, hosted on our GitHub repository. Let me push this update first. Uh, okay. Okay, so here uh, you can click any of the repositories and this is our security of information systems repository. You can click our Discord link and you can join our Discord channel and then you can uh, contact me from here or you can write your ideas in our uh, security channel to join that security of information system channel click for so you see now this is our channel you can type here or you can contact me by right click and message okay uh, hopefully see you next week uh, stay safe from coronavirus end of lecture always you, you can also always email me my email is also written on our uh, a github repository here okay okay see you